when we think about the connected home, for, for people thinking about this space, what's the future going to look like? What's the future connected home? You know, what's, what's that going to look like, Seth, if we start with you? What's that going to look like? I think it's hard to tell what, what uh, is going to be really big you know, beyond, let's say, two, three years from now. Um, there are a couple of verticals that are doing really well in connected home. Video is doing really well. Uh, you know, Dropcam has a really popular commercial solution. Time Warner has video as part of the eye control solution. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things that are out there. Uh, connected thermostats, which is my business, uh, is, is a, a sector that's doing really well. And then security, uh, which is sort of connecting a bunch of these things together. It's sort of security and home management is doing really well. It's kind of hard to tell what's going to be next. Adam, what would you add to that? I think what Seth said is is absolutely right. I mean, what you know, what is the future of the connected home? It's unclear. Um, you know, which verticals are going to take off? I think energy management is something that's very ex interesting. I think health and wellness is very interesting, whether it's your own health and wellness or an elderly parent living alone so you can help monitor them or something communicating to the doctor. There's a lot of exciting things there. But Time Warner Cable Strategy with Intelligent Home is that because we don't know what's going to take off, what we're trying to do is build the aggregation piece um, and an open, very open and flexible platform so that whatever takes off, you know, and whoever invents it, whether it's iControl, well, iControl's providing us the platform, whether it's Energy Hub or someone on Kickstarter, or et cetera, can quickly come onto our platform and give it to our customers. So whether it's a really cool wearable that we haven't thought about today or something that communicates your vital signs to your doctor, we want to make sure our platform is open and flexible and integrates it together in an easy to use format. And that's really Time Warner Cable Strategies to build that aggregation platform working with iControl and, and Energy Hub in some regards. Well, Tom, what do, when, when people first come into the space and, and you talk with them, what is it that they consistently miss? What is it that, that people, when they first start thinking about this, this space, either get wrong or just don't get that they miss about this space? I think two things. Uh, first, I think that consumers are going to be educated that all these point solutions should be working together, right? So you, you may the, your entry ramp onto this uh, you know platform or, or the connected home might be an energy management or a, a connected thermostat, um, but then when you add in lights or you start adding in cameras, you want it all to work together. You just want to sit there and say, "I'm away." lock my door, change my thermostat, notify me if it's all off. It's all going to work together rather than going into 12 different apps on my smartphone and doing the 12 things. The second, I think all the point solutions right now, they all their business model is I will be the entry into the connected home, which is great. What happens when you're the second or the third? Right? So if somebody already came in and bought a drop cam solution and now they want a thermostat, well, they want them to work together. So I think the point solutions are going to have to coalesce around uh, platforms that allow it to work together. I, I think that's uh, the primary thing. I also think um, the second answer to your question would be that there are about eight different companies today that offer me and my household some sort of flavor of connected home. So I have the cable company, my wireless provider, the security company used to be in my house, um, some retailers now. I think that's going to become a dozen or two dozen companies very quickly. Every brand that thinks that they can be an extension into home, they may be offering security on your PC, they may be securing your car, they may be insuring your house. They're all going to be offering some flavor of the uh, connected home. One of the big things was the Google acquisition of Nest. How is that? How has that impacted this space? I'm, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to go to you, Adam. How has that impacted this space? I think it's great. I actually do. Um, I think it it. It provides what we've all known for a long time, that this is a real space. It's not just a, for early adopters and not just for techies. This is something that uh, the mass consumer wants and it can provide tremendous value. Um, so from that standpoint, we're very excited about it. And, and I joke, but it actually is true. It's bringing attention that, you know, that, hasn't, that hasn't been brought to the space in, in, a, in a while. Though to be, to be fair, there's lots of other exciting things going on. Like I was at CES two weeks ago or a month ago, and the explosion around this is bef this was before Google no after Google no before Google before, yeah. before, before Google, Google announced the Nest and it it has crossed the chasm to use a business school term um, of kind of just techie people to really everyone is now trying to figure it out but but more specific to your question so so that's one thing with the Google Nest it just provides a little bit more legitimacy uh, to the space but you know specifically is Google now a competitor in this space of Time Warner Cable perhaps. 
We have to see exactly how they're gonna play it out. Are they gonna get into the monthly service model, which would be more of a direct competitor to us, or are they just gonna be selling devices? Obviously, they might have some interesting things to do with it, and, and Seth could talk to it in much more detail than I can around using that information for better targeted advertising. There's some theories out there that they're just doing it because, or not just, one of the big reasons they're doing it is because they really don't have good hardware design, and these guys from Nest all came from Apple, and they, they, they built a, a beautiful hardware piece, and it helps them get into that space. So there's theories, but we're obviously very closely looking at it, but net-net, I, I'm actually very excited about it. It's, it's good for the industry. I mean, I think that legitimacy point cannot be overstated. I mean, I think, I think any big company that is in the home service business, someone in a strategy team or in a product team had you know, put a business plan together maybe three years ago, it might have been six months ago, and it had been languishing, sort of ready to be approved. And then, you know, I think a lot of companies were sort of hanging by the hoop, waiting for, they're saying, you know, you have maybe one or two million homes that have some level of connected thermostats. In the case of Nest, we can wait for a little while and be fast followers. And people were sort of trying to figure out, oh, we're in the monthly recurring revenue business, so we don't want to do something that if there isn't a monthly recurring revenue opportunity, so we'll just wait for the right thing to emerge. When, the, when Google and Nest happens, I think suddenly everyone realizes that they might be about to just lose that battle permanently, that, that it could just be that everyone's thermostat gets gobbled up by Google and Nest. So that's spurring a huge amount of action. Google does not do everything right. Um, Nest is doing a lot of things right. Um, but it's, it's a huge market. It's not a market that historic, it's so, it's so fragmented. Um, you know, to Tom's point about how many dozens of different companies there are, none of these markets, home security, HVAC, uh, cars, none of these are sort of dominated by one or two players. They tend to be very, very fragmented in terms of the companies that serve them. And then the distribution models are thousands of companies often. So um, I think, generally speaking, this is good for the entire And I would also add, and this might just be some bloggers, so you can't overplay that, um, but uh, you know, some people who love Nest, there's some talk out there saying, well, now that Google bought them, I'm really not so interested in them anymore, whether it's because they don't have that kind of startup feeling or because they're nervous about privacy issues, things like that. Again, we'll see. I think a lot of times people scream about change, and then slowly you kind of just accept it and move on. So we'll see if those are just a, a loud minority. But I think there is some concern around you know, Google getting into your privacy in your home. There are stories out there where you know, somebody's baby monitor was connected to their Wi-Fi uh, you know, open network, and all of a sudden somebody's watching their house, right? And so I think that will create some fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market. But uh, I think it, you know, the service providers aren't going to allow that to happen, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I also want to say, like, I mean, if you think about it, we were joking before the panel that um, you know, I, I, I have been discussing the Google acquisition of Nest over email, which is provided by Google for my company, right? We use Google Apps. But, but more than that, I mean, yes, somebody, if they, if they you know, hacked into um, your settings of some piece of the connected home, they could learn some things about you. But think about, I mean, like what you write in email and how private that is. To me, finan direct financial information, direct communications, those are the things that are the most private. It's not clear to me that there's much beyond video in the connected home that is uh, is a really, really big new privacy. Yeah, concern. I don't know if I would agree with that. I think that connected home, knowing when someone opens a door, knowing when someone can get home, if you have things like presence-based apps that let your f cell phone let you know if you're five, you know, if I'm five feet away from my home, to know location type things. I think I think there is definitely concerns theoretically, but we were talking about it earlier, which I think is fascinating about privacy, whether it's about connected home or something else. I feel like if you asked a survey and you listed all these dangers of privacy, everyone would say, no, I won't do that. No, I wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't accept that. But as Seth said, we all use Gmail that actually does a lot of those things that you don't realize. So I think privacy is, is, an, is, 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 a, is kind of a contradictory topic because everyone says they don't want to give up their privacy, but we all do it. Maybe we don't realize we're doing it or maybe we're just kind of ignorance is bliss. Um, now, that being said, you know, when we launched our intelligent home product, we were extremely concerned about it. it, it you know, as a cable company, um, I was joking earlier on my other interview that people are convinced that our set-top boxes are filming you while you're watching TV, let alone if we put a camera in your home. <laughs> so, um, so we have, you know, we worked with Eye Control on this, absolutely very strict policies around getting access to video or the history in the home. I think it's a constant vigilance, right? You have to, because any little loophole could could open up, so you, we're always, every least, you know, doing these security audits and all these things. 
What's interesting is your previous question is things get more and more onto the platform. Right. You know, to be the hub of the Internet of Things, you have to have the most things, right? So you want to have things on your, you want the thermostats and all this diversity coming on. Well, today we have, there's concepts of whitelist and blacklist, right? And they test, you know, devices and then they say, it's on our whitelist. Well, to really be diverse, you have to have a concept of a gray list, right? And so it's like, we're not going to deep dive into that technology to make sure it's secure. So if you want to put it on, you're now taking the burden to making sure that you can't, you know, it can't hack in subscribers. So you'll start seeing platforms saying, hey, if you just want to buy something off the shelf and put it on, it, you know, you may have to take on some responsibility to, uh, around that because we're not putting, you know, the firms offering that platform may or may not put a stamp of approval on every device in order to get that diversity. There is one other element of security that I think is is um, sort of under talked about, which is essentially an element of national security. So let's say you're putting, let's say you put a, you know, fifty thousand thermostats in a service territory, or let's say you even put uh, a few hundred electric cars that are connected, where they have chargers that are connected to cars, um, and suddenly you turn on everyone's air conditioning simultaneously. You can bring down pieces of the power grid. I mean, a, a second piece of my business is the opposite of that, which is off, is, which is offsetting um, peak power load to reduce power. But if somebody were to hack into a control system that allows you to suddenly increase the power usage of a large group of customers, you could spike the, the um, demand on the grid, and you could absolutely you know, cause a blackout somewhere. So there are entire other sort of emergent things that probably we haven't thought of. Professor King. <laughs> Oh no, I'm getting cold called. Yeah, the yeah. Here. What? They didn't tell me this. Cold. Yeah, I think you do. So I, I should say that I, I worked at Honeywell in 1985 trouble. on the smart house. So here we are 30 years later, and I'm hearing the smart house again, sort of. And here's my, my question is this. You guys, you, the, the pain points that you brought up, which are energy and security, if anything, those are getting better. Energy prices are going down. Security is much, the, the crime rates are going down. So, and I hear that cost is going down. But if the cost is going down, and that's the thing, I would think there would be some lead user that has a pain point that they've already done. Like, they, like if I went into a high, you know, a high-end co-op in New York City, what is it that they're doing and that their price letter, they're, they're sort of lead users in this space that is going to be this thing that's going to drive this? Because otherwise, I'm back to energy and security, and you sort of said, well, energy, you can pretty much do it with the Honeywell thermostat, even if it's not on this thing. And security, I'm not even convinced that that's such a huge problem. So where is the lead user, and what are they doing? On, I can't speak to the security piece because I don't have a home security system and I don't I don't need one. But the um, but I live in a really safe part of New York City and I just just not on my mind. Um, uh, you know, energy prices to the end customer are not going down that much, and I think um, they I think the long term trend is that they will go back up. I'll speak to the security piece. It's certainly a continuing growing market. Now, it's not growing as quick as it used to, but I, there's not a sense that the crime is going down. I don't, to be honest, I don't even, I haven't seen that stat. I mean, so, but I'll take your word for it. That, that, and as a result, home security is going down. It continues to grow. We're at 20%. It grows 1% a year. Um, what, what we're seeing, though, is that the, the reason that we think security is, is, is kind of not plateau, but slow down, is that people arm it once a day and then disarm it, and that's that. What's beautiful about our system is that by adding all these other things to it, interacting with your thermostat, interacting with your lights, looking at cameras, my goodness, our customers love their cameras. They love pulling out their iPhone and seeing what their pet is doing or make sure the nanny is okay. And adding that is constantly reminding you, okay, this is, you know, the more they interact with their system, unlike a traditional security product, the more they're getting value from it and the more they're willing to pay for it and the more customers we're able to get that way, which is exactly why we're not offering just a plain old security system. This is a home automation system that has security as an important component, but lots of other things. And, and that's how we're getting into it. Now, there are, there are non-security um, products out there. We don't offer that yet today. We'll see if, if we do that. But we think there's plenty of room for growth in the security space as part of a larger home management platform.